Uh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. I am really grateful to be able to contribute to such an important debate. I want to start uh, with a quote from the Scottish Government, a commitment from the Scottish Government, and they say, and I do quote, as we reduce our emissions and respond to cli uh, changing climate, our journey is fair and creates a better future for everyone, regardless of where they live, what they do and who they are. Warm words, admirable targets, world-leading targets, we are constantly told. Of course, Deputy Presiding Officer, that's exactly what they are. Warm words and targets, without outcomes or a route map to those outcomes. As I've said many times before in this chamber, hitting these targets is absolutely crucial, because not only to, because to not to do so means that Scotland's contribution to keeping 1.5 alive will fall short. And honestly, if self-congratulatory statements about world-leading targets was a carbon-negative activity, the Scottish Government would have already single-handedly decarbonised most of the developed world. So let's look at that commitment from the Scottish Government. A better future for everyone, regardless of where they live, what they do and who they are. Well, not if you live in rural Scotland where transport links continue to crumble, the ability to run an EV is incredibly problematic, and a dearth of EV charging points, rail links and bus routes. However, Presiding Officer, I want to highlight the blue economy in the Just Transition route. This is the lesser-known cousin of the green economy, yet has more carbon contained within it and the ability to sequestrate carbon than the green economy does. Marine ecosystems worldwide store and cycle an estimated 93% of the Earth's CO2. Seagrass sequestration of carbon is 35 times faster than the rainforest. It also provides a fantastic renewable food source that must be managed properly if we are to maintain food security. However, the poor launch of the Scottish Government's HMPA consultation was highlighted and has highlighted the need to look at our blue economy with respect to a just transition in more detail. What we needed was direct consultation with communities and allowing local communities their say. It is obvious coastal communities and Scottish industry within the blue economy feel left behind and that the Scottish Government are not delivering on their promise of a just transition for them. It is disappointing the Scottish Government did not take a more direct approach to consulting communities on policy and would directly impact their livelihood and viability. And it's easy to see that an online consultation with online workshops was a poor choice for engagement. As our blue economy grows and new technology becomes available, Scotland's seas are under pressure for space, space for renewable energy, space for fisheries that minimise gear conflicts, space for aquaculture, including finfish, shellfish and the growing seaweed industry, space for shipping lanes and transportation, with 90% of the world's goods traded on maritime routes, space for tourism and space for conservation. Industry, including tourism, fishing and aquaculture, NGOs and community groups, have called for better spatial management plans that take advantage of local historic knowledge and better balanced industry and the need for conservation and nature-based solutions. Many of these stakeholders cite inadequate funding, unclear objectives and lack of data as key barriers to proper implementation of marine spatial planning. Much of the Scottish Government's current marine policy is driven by the Scottish Green Party ideology and misleading international comparators rather than science-based evidence. The Scottish Government have admitted as much in response to portfolio questions, stating that they do not have the data to validate their policy choice, but rather have policies based on, and I quote, how best we can develop policy in the absence of science and data. Similarly, Scotland's Marine Assessment 2020 explicitly stated there is insufficient data to allow detailed assessment. Deputy Presiding Officer, that is no way to approach such an important legislation, legislation that can have such a significant and potentially detrimental impact on communities reliant on a robust and sustainable blue economy. Scottish Government guesswork is what they are being offered, developing HPMAs with very little evidence on their impact in temperate waters is not just ridiculous, it is hugely irresponsible. It is tempting to say that the SNP Government are all at sea on this issue, but of course that would require them to successfully build a boat. Deputy Presiding Officer, the warm words from the Scottish Government are increasingly looking like hot air. It is time they stopped talking the dream and started living the reality. Only then can Scotland make a meaningful contribution to keeping 1.5 alive, Deputy Presiding Officer.